Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in our last video we talked about an introduction to search indexes and like the idiot I am I decided to split this kind of category into two parts, both search indexes and Elasticsearch. The issue though is that there wasn't that much content for either of them. So what I'm going to do is give you guys the Jordan boyfriend experience and try and take something that normally takes about 30 seconds to two minutes and make it last around five minutes. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into Elasticsearch. I am going to stall as long as I possibly can. Let's get started. All right, so like I mentioned, today we would be talking about Elasticsearch. So what actually is Elasticsearch? As I have 3% on my iPad and try and uh, run this one out before it dies. Elasticsearch is effectively a convenience wrapper around Lucene. Now we spoke about Lucene in our last video. Lucene is literally just a search index. And what that means is it allows you to do all sorts of complex search functionality. And that includes things like prefix text searching, suffix text searching, geolocation searching, number searching, date searching, all of that. And so as a result, Lucene in itself is really great, but it is not really meant to be a fully managed service. There's a lot that you would have to do on your own in order to make sure that it's running across a bunch of nodes in a cluster. So Elasticsearch instead it takes care of a lot of that inconvenience for you and makes it all really easily managed. How do they do so? Well, they give you a REST API so you can go ahead and easily basically add documents to the Elasticsearch, query documents from the Elasticsearch. Uh, it actually has its own query language. Uh, it deals with replication and partitioning for you. I think there's probably a zookeeper or something similar at the center of it somewhere. And also it's got some, you know, kind of additional services that are nice such as visualization, logging, monitoring, all, all that crap. Anyways, how does Elasticsearch actually work in a way that, uh, you know, we can talk about how we best want to be using it? Well, Elasticsearch is actually going to be maintaining a local index. So if you remember from forever ago when we started talking about partitioning, we discussed what a local versus a global index was. Now a global index basically means that for a given key on one of our partitions, we have all of the possible values for it. So that would be like over here on the right. As you hear, there are sirens in Chicago. This is an unfortunate reality of living in the city. I'm gonna give that about another two seconds before I get pissed off that they're stopping at a light. Okay, they fully got caught in traffic and that took like 30 more seconds than it needed to. Anyways, like I was starting to talk about, one thing that you could do with Elasticsearch is a global index, right? Where unlike the left side over here, where you can see that on two partitions, we've got the key cherry, we would have cherry and all of its values on one partition. However, when it comes to Elasticsearch, that's actually pretty tough. Because keep in mind that normally, in actual Elasticsearch, these document IDs right here that might correspond to documents might not just be IDs, but the full document. So let's imagine each of those is like a megabyte or something. Because this is an inverted index and each document ID could appear many, many times in the inverted index, having a global index means that you might actually have to send that document to many, many different partitions. And then that effectively is going to eat up a ton of space and it pretty much destroys the point of partitioning in the first place. Instead, what we could do on our local partitions is just make like a reference to the document. So, you know, you store the document somewhere in memory and then this is just like a, you know, a low storage pointer. So it's obviously going to be a lot more efficient. However, using local partitioning comes at a pretty major cost, which is that if I now want to get all of the documents that have cherry and I'm over here on the left, I have to query multiple partitions and then aggregate them over here on some aggregator node. And that, of course, is going to increase latency by quite a bit. And so in reality, when we're using Elasticsearch, if possible, it isn't always, we would like to keep all of our searches limited to just one partition at a time. So what's an example of this? Let's imagine I ran a chat app like Facebook Messenger, and we want to be able to search through one chat at a time. Well, obviously, if every single message is a document, we want to keep all of our documents in the same chat on the same note. Because the whole point is that we are going to be partitioning those by chat ID because we can only search the messages of one chat at a time. Now, of course, if you're someone like Amazon and you just have a search bar and you know, you're able to search any single product on the site with that search bar, then you're kind of screwed out of luck. 
it would be nice if you could partition products somehow according to like the type of thing they are for example like home and garden or cooking or anything like that and then maybe you would have to select a drop down before you searched but sometimes the reality of the situation is you just can't partition that easily and then you would have to aggregate all of those search results okay the last thing that makes Elasticsearch kind of unique and makes it perform very well is its caching mechanisms. So in the most part, you know, when we talk about caching, generally speaking, we're either going to take a piece of our index and cache basically that whole thing in memory, or we would take an entire query result uh, that someone ran and we would cache that because if it were popular, if a bunch of people were running that particular query result, let's say everyone was you know, searching for the same post on Twitter at the same time, or the same group of posts, then it would be a popular query result and we would want the whole thing. At the same time though, sometimes you can actually be a little bit smarter than that, and that's what Elasticsearch tries to do. So it will actually cache part of a query if part of a query is very common or very popular. So let's imagine I go on Amazon, as I do, and I go ahead and search for tissues, as I do, no reason in particular, and also for you know tissues that are on sale because I'm cheap. That's just how Jews are, or maybe me in particular. The point is, not everyone is such a degenerate as myself to be searching for tissues, but most people are pretty cheap and they are gonna be looking for items that are on sale. So if we cache this part right here of all the items that are on sale, and that was say on multiple different nodes especially, so it was a slow query, being able to cache that result would help speed up queries by a bit, and when everyone else is searching for on sale items, even if it's only just part of their query, being able to cache that result will help a lot. Anyways guys, like I mentioned, I know this was gonna be a short video, I tried to drag it out a little bit, and just to you know, have some substance to it, but uh, hope it helps, and I will see you all in the next one.